And I believe if we can shatter the illusion that uh, you know, 19 terrorists with box cutters threw those planes into the uh, towers, then we'll be able to more effectively roll back these tyrannical programs. But again, the liberty movement seems afraid to go there for some reason. One thing for the establishment, you know, it's one thing for the establishment to, to quell and squash 9-11 truth. It's another thing for our own movement to do it, and for political campaigns to do it. You can know the establishment is winning whenever we are trying to silence each other and silence ourselves. And once again, I don't much appreciate it. I think this happens for a number of reasons. Chief among them is when people have a confusion between means and ends. The end is the ultimate goal that people try to achieve. The means is the tactics that they use in order to achieve that end. There's a lot of people that think political campaigns, the Ron Paul campaign, for example, is an end in itself. Like if we were to elect Ron Paul, then everything's done. We're, we're free now. He's elected. Yeah, I can go about my business. I'm a free man. That's just not the case. The campaign ought to be a means to the end. So what is the end? Well, in my opinion, the end is the creation of a wholly free society based on mutually beneficial voluntary associations. No coercion, no control, no hierarchical institutions that force you to do things you don't want to do. 100% freedom. Right? How's that sound? Does that sound crazy? So when people think that the campaign is the end in itself, sometimes they avoid talking about taboo topics or goofy topics. Sometimes they even avoid talking about the realities of creating a stateless society. And I think this is damaging to our movement. It allows lives to permeate. It allows them to keep the perpetual police state growing. And if we do not hold our ultimate goal above us, which is the creation of a free society, how can we ever hope to achieve it? So I recommend people talk about 9-11 truth, talk about anarchy and voluntarism all the time in every instance, even if you're on the campaign trail for the wrong call. That's right. People are all too often trapped in the idea that campaigns and politicians can create freedom. If you have to ask permission to be free, you're only affirming how unfree you truly are. That's why I recommend people go post-political and people do not be afraid to speak the truth. So go post-political and simply choose freedom, right? So what is post-political? Well, it's not about restoring America now. It's about creating a free society. I'm not entirely sure that the United States Constitution is even compatible with individual liberty. Remember the three-fifths compromise? What about the Electoral College? Or what about the taxing ability of a hierarchical, centralized, geographic monopoly on force and the provision of justice? This is not creative liberty. Let's say that we do restore America now, and we go back to the 1789 level of freedom in the United States. Freedom, yeah. I think only about 10% of the people that existed in North America even had a say in the Constitution. Not to mention the motherfuckers that wrote it were slave owners. How's that for freedom? What if we go back to that day, to the Constitution? Who's to say we're not simply going to fall into the same tyranny that we're at today? I would, rec I would say that we'd actually find that tyranny a lot quicker because the American public has their heads so far up their asses. I'm not a big fan of the Constitution lately. I was an article of the Confederation guy, to tell you the truth. All right? So, you know, to, to illustrate that point, like Lysander Spooner said, either the Constitution created the problems we have today, or it was powerless to prevent them. Either way, it's unfit to exist. So in the absence of the Constitution, what do we do? Well, I recommend you go post-political and we create alternative institutions that are based on voluntarism, based on peaceful trade amongst individuals that are freely cooperating with each other, not forcing anything. So what does that look like? Well, let's take the end the Fed movement, for example. A lot of people say, how do we end the Fed? Let's end the Fed by passing a piece of legislation, like if Congress wants to give up that power. People need to realize that allows them to stay in office. They don't have to raise taxes as much, even though they do. They don't have to raise taxes as much because they can simply print the money. The one thing that we're doing down in Central Texas is we're beginning to create competing currencies. One of the things we're doing is we're trading with silver dimes. Pre-1965 silver dimes, it's 90% silver, it's worth over $3. We found vegetable uh, gardeners at the farmer's market. We have a chiropractor that takes silver, a veterinarian, a dentist. So the best way to end the Fed is to stop using the Federal Reserve note. And the motherfucker will end itself. 
right? Another thing we can do is create communities of safety. We launched a program called Lone Star Smart. It's the sovereign mutual aid response team. We're taking care of each other. We're trying to render the state irrelevant. Any problems that we have as a community, we can take care of ourselves. We don't have to go to some centralized, hierarchical institution in order to solve our common problems. We can solve them ourselves. So that's what going post-political is all about. Leaving the politicians, leaving the institution to crumble within itself and building the communities based on freedom, happiness, peace, and love. The next thing we need to do is to stop asking permission to be free and go ahead and live free now. Your right to travel, if you have a driver's license, you gave up your right to travel, you transferred it into a privilege. If you got a concealed carry license, sorry for New York City folk, then you took away your right to keep and bear arms, turned it into a privilege. If you pay income tax, you gave away your right to own the fruits of your own labor. It's by time we stop all that shit. And I know it's scary, and I know it's fearful, and I know their guns are big, and their boots are strong, they can kick your door down and take you away. But I gotta say, there's strength in numbers, there's strength in unity, and there's strength in truth. And we have all three of those things, and if we just stand up, then there's no holding us down. So, thank you everybody. Be 